Hey, I'm Max and I recently made a video making fun of mobile game ads by making a game like you see in those ads in under 24 hours. I received a comment from someone who is subscribed to my channel for over a year, so probably one of my first subscribers, since my channel is only slightly older than a year, asking me if I can please make a tutorial on how I did this. So that's what I'm going to do today. And I also got another comment asking me if I can show how to make it look good on mobile, so I'll try my best for that too. The first step is going to be to open your Unity Hub. If you don't have it, just search on the internet Unity Hub and you'll find it easily. Then if you don't have any version of Unity installed, you need to install one. In my case, I'm using the latest LTS, so 2021.3.6, but any version should work. Then go into your project, click New Project. And as for the template, I'm going to use 3D URP. I think it's better in general to use the universal render pipeline because it gives you more stability and also more option with shaders if you want to develop on that game more later. And there's really no downside to using it, so we might as well. Then for the project name, you can put whatever you want and hit create. Okay, so my project just got created with the URP template. Here there is a readme asset. If you want, you can read it. In my case, I'll just delete it. And also tutorial info, you can delete that. But don't delete the universal render pipeline thing here. And also don't delete settings. Those are all the settings for the different renderer you want to have. So some with more quality, some with less. Now to get started on the game, I'll import the meshes I made. I made them very quickly in Blender. I think I took seven minutes to make all of them. So they're very low quality. I suggest you go make or get your own. But I'll put the one I use in the description as a download if you want to use the same one. I'll just create a folder, I'll call it meshes, and inside of it I'll drag in all of my meshes. So you can see here I have all of my FBX, I'll simply select them all and drag them in. Now it gave me some warnings about my character saying something is wrong with the mesh, and that actually causes it to have a hole in it. I'm not really sure why and I won't bother with fixing it because it's just for this tutorial, but that's why I said you should get your own meshes. Okay so let's get right into it. First of all here I have my camera, I actually won't bother with moving it, I think it's fine where it is. Now my global volume here, I probably won't be using it, but just so it's not in the way, I'll just drag it down. So what I want to do is first place my road part as a mesh in front of my camera like this. And I'll try to center it in the camera. So I think position 0, 0 and probably Z minus 5 or so should be good. Actually, I said I won't change the camera, but I think I'll drag it up and make it rotate down a little bit. So if you don't know how to make it move, you can click the arrow here, move tool. And you can move it up and click the rotation tool to rotate it. So place the camera however you want. I think like this is good for me and I'll simply move my road back a little bit. So now you can see in my camera I can no longer see the back of the road. So you can see if I hit play I cannot see the back of the road so that's good. Now I will actually make my road quite a bit bigger. So I think maybe 800 on X and 800 on Y. And I'll put it back about where it was. And yeah, I think that's good. Now what I want to do is add on my road. So you go on the road on your objects, add component and add the rigid body. Now on the rigid body, you want to disable use gravity. Also, I like to go in the constraints and freeze all of the rotations and all of the positions except the one I want to move. So except the Z, just to make sure it won't move in a way I don't want it to. And also we want to add another component and add a box collider. So by default, our box collider should be exactly the right size and it looks like it is. If it isn't, you can click edit collider and try editing the size like this. Now I will go in my assets, create a new folder, call it prefabs. And inside of here, I'll put all of my prefabs. So here my road part, I'll just drag it into my prefab folder and hit original prefab. So this will create a prefab with my road and my rigid body and box collider. Now I can simply duplicate this road part and move it to the end of the last one. So in my case, it looks like 28 doesn't quite reach. So I'll do 27 and you can see they slightly overlap. You can see this one ends here and the other one starts a little bit later. But that's actually good because if they're just barely touching when they move, if they have a slight difference in speed, then they will start distancing themselves and you don't really want that. So overlapping a little bit is okay. You can see it doesn't even look like they're overlapping from the game view. Now I will add a third one, so just duplicate again. And this one should be around... Okay, so I actually made it a little bit easier to place them. I just put this one at Z3, so you can see here 2, 3. This one at 27, so 24 more. 
and so this one will be 24 more again than 27 so 51 so this way they just barely overlap okay so with three rows it should be enough so now i can go back in my assets right click create a folder and call it scripts in here we will make a simple c sharp script so create c sharp script and call it road script and this is going to be the script for a road so if you double click it should open up visual studio if you don't have visual studio i guess you should install it I think you could do this also with visual code or pretty much any editor. You could even do it in notepad if you want. But personally, I like visual studio. So in my road script, what I'll do is create my variable, just type rigid body, and then I'll call it RB. And in my start, I'll do RB equals to get component rigid body. So this script here, we are going to attach it to our road. So I'll do it right now so I don't forget. So go on your prefab of your road part click on it and you can see in the right here all of your prefab data and then you can go at the bottom add component and add your road script so you can see my road script is added here and since they are all prefab so each one of these three rows are prefab if i go on each one you can see every single one of them got a road script added to them so this is what's cool about prefabs if you change it on one thing it's going to change it on all of the instances so since i put the script on my prefab now all of my roads have the script and you can see in the script we do get component rigid body so it's going to get this rigid body here which is the one of the current road then we want to give it an initial speed so we'll do rb.velocity equals to new vector tree and in here we put the initial velocity we want so if we take a look at how we want our road to move if i move this one here we want it to move like this towards the camera so it looks like the camera is moving forward if you take a look at my position z here you can see when i move it it goes down so we want the position z to go down so what i'll do is give it a velocity of 0 0 and let's say minus 5. we'll see if that's too fast or too slow soon so now if i save this my road should move towards the camera giving the illusion so you can see in the scene mode it moves towards the camera and on the camera it looks like the camera is moving forward and that's exactly the illusion we want but you can see the roads keep going back and so we run out of roads so the next thing we have to do in the update, we have to check if transform.position.z, which is the direction we're moving in, is less than, and we check at which point we want it to disappear. So I think here the camera probably doesn't see it anymore. And no, it doesn't. So let's say at minus 21, if the transform position.z is, is less than minus 21, then that means it's behind the camera, so we can put a little note here. Then we want to teleport it back to the end, so it looks like the road is infinite. So technically, we could do something like, since the original position of my road is 3, and now it's at minus 21, we could do like plus 24, and that would probably work, but you could end up having some delay between the roads over time, so you don't want that. So to make sure that each road stays connected and there's no space between the roads, what I will do is get all of the roads and then find the road that's the most in the back and teleport behind it. So what I'll do is create a road script array and get all of my roads equals to find objects of type. Make sure object with a S because you want to get all of them. Road script. So with this, we will get all of the road scripts and then we can simply find the one that's the most in the back. The road that is going to be the most in the back is the one with the highest Z. So here I'll save the ISZ and I'll save a road script for the back road, which I will update depending on which one we find. Then we want to for each road script road in roads. So we will loop through our array here of all the roads and get each road out of it. Then we can simply initiate our ISZ to zero and initiate our back row to let's say row zero because we will change it anyway. And in our for each, we will do if road.transform.position.c is higher than the highest z, then we will set the highest z to our road.transform.position.z and we will set our back road equals to the road we're currently checking. So this will loop through all of the roads. Then we will check if the road we're checking is further than the last one we found. And if so, we will set it to the last one we found and check the rest. So at the end, our back road here is going to contain the road that's the furthest back. 
So then all we have to do is teleport behind that last road we just found. So we'll do transform dot position equals to back road dot transform dot position. So this will teleport the current road that just reached behind the camera to the last road we just found. But we also need to offset it so it's actually behind it. And remember when we set our road, we did for example 3 and then 27, so it's plus 24z. So I'll do plus new vector 0, 0 and then 24z. So once our road reaches behind the camera, we find the last road and then we teleport behind the last road. If we save this and go check in game, now our road should teleport back to the end once they reach behind the camera. So let's see this in action. This one is about to reach behind the camera and it teleports back to the end. Now this one, it teleports back to the end again. So if we go from the game view, it actually looks like the road is sort of infinite. We can kind of see it generating. So if you see the road appearing at the end, you can simply add one more road so it doesn't look as obvious. So here I have my third row, I'm just going to duplicate it and again add 24, so that will be 75. So now I have four rows in a row and if I hit play and look through my game view, I should not see the road appearing at the end anymore because it's too far away. So I can kind of see it, so again if you want you can add more or you can change the angle of your camera. If you angle the camera a little bit more down, then you should not see as far. That's kind of up to you. So now we have our infinite road. But if we look at the infinite road from the game view, it looks kind of weird. Because there is not a lot of reference point as to what's moving. And we want to give the illusion that the player is moving forward on the road. To give this illusion, it's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is drag in your player character. Then add a animator to it. Then you can create a animator controller right here call it for example player controller then set that controller on your animator on your player so you can see here I have my player mesh with animator and this controller and then if I double click on my controller I can see the animator and if I open up my player I can see my run animation so I just have to drag in my run animation and set it as default state I also have to go on my run animation and click hit it and then go into the loop time and click loop time now if I apply this, this will make my animation loop and make it the default state. So my character will be looping the run animation in place. And now if I hit play, you can see that my player looks like he's running. Even though he's actually not moving at all, it's the road that's moving and not him. From the game view, it looks like he's running on the road. And if just to test, I put a little thing here and I put it under a road. So you just make it a child of the road just to test. You can see it looks like the player is running towards it when really it is it that is moving back. And that's the trick of infinite roads because if we really made the player move forward instead of the road moving towards the player, the position of the player would keep increasing in the Z. And eventually when you get to huge numbers, you can get floating point errors and a bunch of things you don't really want. And also this way it's easier to spawn objects. For example, if I want to spawn these spikes, I can easily say, okay, it's at five, five, for example. So I think it's just a lot easier to make the road move instead of making the player move. So that's it for this part, we now have an infinite road that we can run on. So the next part will probably be to add spikes that you can touch and get destroyed. And also making the player controller so you can move the player. So stay tuned for the next part.